You know, I've been asked by one of my subscribers who wanted me to talk about the blackout of 1965 or I think 1965 or 1977 about what happened in New York City and those blackouts. Well, I lived through three New York City blackouts. 1965, 1977, and 2003. My name is Eric, and welcome to the craziness that lives inside my head. Taste the food. <laughs> November 9th, 1965 was the blackout. I was in junior high school, and I don't know if I was in the ninth, uh, the eighth grade or the seventh grade. I don't remember. I was in one of those grades. I get out of school at 3 p.m. I walk home. I didn't, we didn't have school buses. We did, but... I didn't live in a neighborhood that got bust out of your neighborhood. So I walked home and everything was fine. Went home, made a sandwich, watched cartoons, wait for my mom to come home to cook dinner. And that's when it happened. I think it happened around four or five when it got dark. It was just getting dark and all the lights went out. And this is 1965. November. And all I could tell you, being a kid, well, it was exciting. Everybody was in the streets, by the way. Everybody was in the streets. And because a lot of people was coming home from work, I was in the street outside waiting for my mom to come home. When she did get home, first thing she told me to do is go to the uh, hardware store and get candles. So me and my friend, we went to the hardware store around the corner, a block away, it was getting darker and darker. It was already dark. Um, people, those who had flashlights were walking in the street with flashlights. And it was a long line for candles. And we just made it. The hardware store ran out of candles by the time we got there. But we just made it get uh, two candles. And people were walking in the streets with their candles and their flashlights. And those who had transistors radio, those, who, you know, those little radios back then... Everything was made in Japan. So you had a Japanese transistor radio to listen to whatever you could listen to on the radio. And that pretty much was it. Because by the time I, I mean, it was, you know, we had the, I had a candle in my room when I went to sleep. My mom had a candle in, in, my, or in my dad's room, you know. And that was about it. And woke up the next morning. Of course, you talked about it among yourselves, with your, you know, with your uh, friends. And that was 1965, blackout. Now we come into the 1977 blackout was really spooky. Okay. And you want to know, well, what happened? That was so spooky. Well, first of all, for what I remember, I did go to work that day. I came home and I, was, I lived in my very first studio apartment. I think I was, what, 77? What was it? 77? I was 25 years old. I had my very first studio apartment, my very first apartment. I lived on the second floor in the brownstone. It was a brownstone. Uh, I remember that the uh, lights were blinking. Yeah. And, um, and the lights went out. They blinked and bang. But I lived on the second floor. So I hear people from upstairs trying to get, get down the steps. Um... I didn't know what to do, actually, but some told me, get out of there, because it was dark. You don't want to be stuck in the, you know. I will tell you this, though. I do remember I had water. I had water. Uh, I remember my neighbors, especially those above me, didn't have water. But I had water. Uh, and I only, I, one flight of stairs down, I'm, I'm out the building. And we're sitting on the stoop, my neighbors. And all of a sudden, we live a block away from the liquor store. And all we hear is gunfire. Gunfire. Everywhere was gunfire. A block away on uh, Skimmerhorn Street. I lived on State Street at the time, in downtown Brooklyn. 
uh, 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 Livingston Street was there was gunfire and Skimmerhorn Street was gunfire, Hoy Street gunfire. Well, what to find out that people was looting, and the first place they looted was the liquor store. Everywhere they ran to the liquor store. Then you see the guys in the dark with a flashlight, whatever, walking, trying to sell the liquor that they just stole from the liquor store. And that was scary. I mean, people just going crazy, just shooting and, and looting and, you know. So I went back upstairs because I was scared and locked the door. But I had a flashlight, you know. And then the lights didn't come on that morning. But I do know I had to go to work because it was payday. I want to pick up my check. So what I did was I had to walk. There was no train. We wouldn't get on the bus. So actually, I'm not sure there was a bus. I think they did have a bus to go from Brooklyn to Manhattan. I worked in Manhattan. But I had to walk across the, uh, I walked across the, I think, the Brooklyn Bridge. I walked across the Brooklyn Bridge. Walked up uh, uh, Christi, Christie Street. I think Christie Street turned out to be like Second Avenue and one of those. Because I worked on the east side. I walked up Christie Street to the east side. Yeah, I worked on Third Avenue. And I went, got my check. As soon as I got my check, the lights came on. All the lights came on. So I didn't have to walk back home. I didn't have to walk home. What I did was the lights came on. Just wait till the train started. The train, you know, got back on the train and went home. And that was it. I mean, nothing spectacular. No, there was no sexual undertones. And I mean... I was 25 years old, people shooting and carrying on. You won't think about having sex in, in, in the streets at that time. Now my last blackout was 2003. I was at work when this one happened. And I remember it happened when I was at work. I worked in Connecticut, I lived in the Bronx. I had a car. So it was bumper bumper to traffic coming from the Bronx all the way to I should say, coming from Connecticut, going to the Bronx, bumper bumper traffic. And when I got home, I lived on the 13th floor. So the only way for me to get upstairs, I had to walk up 13 flights of stairs. And that's about it. Unfortunately, folks, I don't have any sexual undertones to talk about. Nothing sexual happened, nothing gay happened. The usual stuff. That happens in New York City on a hot, sultry day. Thank you for listening to this craziness that lives inside my head. The journey that began in 2018 continues into the 2040s. Dr. Fernandez has found a way to infuse the God particle into the DNA and genes of a hybrid human. All that is left is extracting these DNA cells from the hybrid human.